All righty. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday, July 15th. Nice to see uh, a good group of people here today. Largest in a while. Looks like they're 21. So let's get going. Uh, my name is Kevin Hurley. I am the managing partner of Hurley Investments. And let's look at what we're going to work at today. I got an email over the week, and I think it was pretty interesting because the question was, when are you adding protection for earnings? Why do you add protection for earnings? And the last one is, how do you know to add protection <laughs> for earnings? So I thought this was a, a pretty ingenious question, right? It seemed to make a lot of sense. It seemed like they were thinking through. And, and so I'm, I asked a question back. Are you looking for a hard set of rules? She said yes. And I told her there is no hard set of rules. I like to add protection six to eight weeks past the earnings and add them two weeks before the actual earnings date because I don't want to pay extra and volatility and have volatility crush happen to my long put options. For crying out loud, I want those long put options to make some money. Now, with that said, With that said, with that said, taking much longer than I meant to here. With that said, not bad. S&P was up 0 0.02. I was up about 2.2. Nice day to beat the S&P 500. With that said, I'm just looking at positions right now. I'm looking and judging my positions. I'm having my positions being looked at based on my earnings list, meaning this earnings list that I still have attached here There are some changes. Apple, Boeing, CVS is now 08, 07 before the market opens. Disney is now no longer estimated, it is after the market closes. Um, MRO. Is no longer estimated. It's now 807 after the market closes. Um, Visa, 23 after the market closes. All right, so I think I've got Disney. Yep, I've got everything in there. And for me, I know I have a bull put. Currently on Apple, 
that I want to take the short put off. But I'm comparing that against my position. Here's my 46 bull puts against my 4,600 shares of Apple. And I'm taking a look and spending my time going, hey, you know what? What I paid $3 for is down to $2. The positions were on a while ago. Because the positions were on a while ago, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep everything off. I'm going to try to take these off at my earliest convenience. But it's not something that I have to do right now. As I go down my list, AOBC, we already had our earnings. It doesn't have earnings until the end of August. I'm just watching my put verticals, trying to get these profitable. Um, those are call verticals, excuse me. I didn't do any puts on American Outdoor Brands Corp. And really, I was really running a risk because if you take a peek at American Outdoor Brands Corp, A, B, American Outdoor Brands Corp. Ah, sorry. Hold on. Ma, nice to see you just joined us. Nice to see that you're here. American Outdoor Brands Corp. So Mod puts us at like 22 here today. We're crying out loud. Don't want to unlock all your features. Don't want to pay a ridiculous price. I just want my chart. All right. When I when it had earnings, it was down here at the 820. Pretty close to being oversold, but it was really the Williams percent R that said, you know what? These guys are oversold at yearly lows, can't go any worse, and I took a chance. I took a big chance on running American Outdoor Brands Corp without any protection. And I figured, why not? Doesn't that go against your, your mantra? Is that how you're saying it? <laughs> um, so, Charlie, yes, it does. Normally, I would never not have some protection on. But as I took a little check on this and what I was looking at, I ran the risk. I decided, you know what? Why not run the risk? Which is foolish. I get it. But there are times when it just doesn't make sense. It was already down to a yearly low. It was down to a yearly low off of some pretty good news on their previous earnings event. I think it was the 819 one. Ran all the way up to 1015, couldn't hold it, bounced down, came back up. Um, Yes, it was a risk. You know what the other one I did on for the last earnings? Ford. I didn't run any protection on Ford last time. Same exact thing, though. Down at 950, bounce off the 200. I had the 50 and the 200 day to work for. I took a chance. I took a chance, and that's why I'm telling you there are no hard set of rules. If there was a hard set of rules, guess what? Everybody would be doing it, right? So, in all honesty, I'm just checking right now. I'm just checking, saying, okay, you know what? Bank of America's covered. This week, um, yeah, Bank of America, and where's my other one? Zion's Bank. Actually, the, oh, the Zion's Bank is next Monday. Where's my other one? 
Schlumberger, excuse me. So I know earnings this week were Bank of America on the 17th and Schlumberger on the 17th. So I made sure those were protected. I still might have to protect in some way Ford and FCX, which I actually already did. Facebook, I might have to protect the shares. I'm going to let the long calls go. Um, Visa for shares, I still have to protect that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and Boeing's already protected. So, so I know I've got a couple, and I'm just looking down my list saying, okay, I got to keep going. Baidu, 6,000 shares. I'm waiting closer to a 120 to protect Baidu. Reason why it's trading in a range. Right now, Baidu is trading in a range. You can easily get up to 150, but it's the 105 to the 120 range. In fact, let me put this down to a shorter range. Sorry, guys. Easier to see it on our six month chart. So Baidu, I'm just playing that range or it bounced up there a couple times. That's where I'm looking at adding my protection. I would not add protection because I just saw the Chinese numbers come out. So my expectation is Baidu will probably trade from 120, lose about nine, seven, eight and a half to 9% and go back down to 105. And it has a huge upside potential with the China deal. So I'm waiting on Baidu right now. What else do I have? Disney's not till the six. For crying out loud, Disney keeps running up. I might not have to protect Disney till we see it up at 150. It's actually 149.31, that pivot point. So I can wait on Disney. I might change my mind if we get a big down day, but I've got some time. So I'm playing the waiting game for adding protection onto the shares. Next question, why do I add protection for earnings? That's for me a pretty simple answer. I add protection around earnings because shares and the market is fully valued after numerous band-aids were put on the last market crash because it is the time that most stocks gap and have significant movement because I don't ever want to see a 10% plus drop in my stock ownership. For me, those are pretty simple reasons. Can you let it run? Can you diversify and let it run? Yeah. If you're willing to take your winners with your losers. It'd be easier for you to do than doing a mutual fund. It'd be cheaper, maybe. Maybe not easier, but cheaper. And in all honesty, um, have a go at it. I think you'll find out, for the most part, it sucks. And you're not there to just have your account trade sideways. Uh, in all honesty, the, the biggest answer, I want to take advantage of dollar cost averaging without having to add more money to the portfolio. That's it. That's why. 
How do I know to add protection for earnings? Actually, that's probably, I don't want to call it a foolish question, but it kind of goes back to what I just said. And it's nothing more than because I pay attention to the earnings season and where my stocks have been, meaning their price action. It, it, kind of simple, kind of simple, but hopefully those three questions are now answered in a in a realistic thought process. You're going to see a lot of educations give you rules and I guess I'm going to tell you that uh, I'm a rule breaker. I want to tell you rules are for fools, but that's not fair either. Some people work under a strict set of rules. But I'll be honest with you, I don't necessarily agree with a a 20% return and then go out. I want to follow the charts. I want to look at most recent highs. I want to play resistance and support levels. I think a firm 20, 25% you get out, you're missing your runs up. I don't think that's a smart way to play the stock market. Um, at the money, in the money, out of the money. Your best bang for the buck is at the money, but there are times where I'm going to run something like an Apple, most likely, out of the money. There are times I don't want to pay for that extra protection. I don't want to pay for the, the best bang for the buck. I want to cheat going bullish looking for a bounce. Um... I would just caution you because if you honestly believe that there's a, if you honestly believe that there is some type of rule that you should be using every single time, I bet you I can find numerous times when you probably shouldn't have. And really it's because the market's a, a moving living creature. There's, there's all kinds of new information that comes in that doesn't necessarily warrant an every single time type of, of rule. And if there was an every single time type of rule, I think most people would already have it figured out and everybody would be doing it, in which case it would now make it null and void. So any comments on that? Any comments on Any comments on on rules in general? <laughs> of course. Leave it to Lance. Lance, you're killing me. Kevin, I have a set of rules and it works very well for me. Lance, um, so let me put this two, two ways for you. Number one, I'm going to congratulate you for it. If you have a set of rules that works for you, use them. I'd be a fool to tell you, ah, that's dumb, don't use them. If you have a set of rules and it's working for you, use them. With that said, Lance, I know you've purchased an education or two or three. I know you've been attending my stuff for over a decade. Um, I may say with one of those, with all due respect comments that um, that in some way, shape or form, if your rules were always working, you probably wouldn't have come to some of these educations and spent money on the education. 
Now, I know you can tell me, hey, I'm using it to help me, and I, I don't mean to be negative on education. That is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you're developing a set of rules, and I would dare say if you've looked at it over time, how you've implemented, adjusted, or even changed some of those rules, it was a process. And that's what I'm trying to say. Trading is a process. That there is no everyday thing that works. That there is no, hey, you do this every single time and you're good to go. It just doesn't work that way. And because it just doesn't work that way, um, it's okay to change your rules. There's nothing wrong with adjusting your rules to fit the time and the to fit the time in the season for what's happening with your stocks. In fact, it's kind of a it's just a quote. But you'll have friends for three reasons. You'll have friends for a season of your of your life. You'll have a friend for a reason in your life. Or you'll have a friend for forever. And I think there's some stocks that fit that same rule. You'll have some rules for a stock for a season. As a stock will go through a cycle. You'll have some specific rules for a reason. A short-term trade, make some money, get out. And then there are some stocks that are lifetime stocks, that are stocks that are your core of your portfolio, that do the best you can to protect, protect them in downturns, that are your diversification that will run your portfolio in a growth model over a period of time. And I just think you need to be careful when you pigeonhole yourself into – in all honesty, a 10%, you know, one week, a 20% three week return when you can have 100% returns in some things. So just just some common sense. I mean, I've also heard this one. Um Pigs get slaughtered, but hogs get fat. <laughs> um, again, there are times when things change. Look at this bull run that we've had. Kevin, why haven't you put short calls on? I haven't put short calls on. Because um, we're rebounding off of a, a big depression. Because I got caught on some NVIDIA short calls where the damn thing went up and I, I couldn't only roll them but once and got called out at 42 with an $18, $17 credit. And this freaking thing went up to 200 Short calls don't warrant an Apple, a Baidu, a Disney, a Ford, a Freeport MacMoran, a Facebook, Micron, Marvel, Under Armour, Schlumberger, Visa, Zions Bank. They are warranted for Boeing. But not a lot of these other ones. Where will our market end this week? Um... It really comes down to earnings, and I would make uh, the expectation or the thought process that probably a little higher. Yes, I know we're coming up to an overbought category, and markets don't just move when we're basically overbought. But I think we can with the earnings push. Earnings push can move our Dow a little bit higher into that overbought category. I think it can move our S&P a little bit higher into an overbought category. And the same thing with the NASDAQ. Still going for a 2.5% July. Kind of interesting. I'm going to show you an article that obviously someone else copied me. 
earnings. We start our uh, city group today, our bank earnings, right? Schwab, Goldman Sachs, Johnson Johnson, First Rise National, United Airlines, Wells Fargo, uh, Domino's Pizza tomorrow, Abbott, Heinz Craft Company, which is probably HKC, U.S. Bank Corp. Alcoa, eBay, IBM, Kinder Morgan, Netflix, Thursday, Dover, Morgan Stanley, Nucor, Philip Morris, United Pacific, um, COF is, uh, oh, what is COF? Uh, I should know, I forgot, Microsoft, Skyworks, AutoLive, my Black Rock Schlumberger. What is COF? Why can I remember what COF is? COF, it's a bank stock, right? What is my COF? Capital One Financial Corp. Ah, can't believe I forgot that. Capital One. All righty, uh, Empire came out today. Retail sales will be important tomorrow, along with capitalization, industrial production, business inventories. Um, the housing market index is also going to be one that will be interesting, considering uh, uh, home builders are at a high. Um, building permits and housing starts on Wednesday, leading indicators on Thursday, Michigan sentiment, and the monthly options expiration on Friday. Internationally, we had China, GDP of 6.2, lowest in 27 years. Uh, not much else to move our market. Preparing for earnings, adding long puts. I think I described that earlier, and I'm adjusting my, my uh, calendar based on um, earnings that come up that get confirmed. So, you know, Micron's out there, Marvel's out there. What's really, Baidu is the probably the one that I'm most concerned about for earnings coming up. I have some interesting articles I thought I'd want to go with you before I get to questions. This is the way everyone is getting wrong about banks. Since I read through the article, I agreed because we've had an inverted yield curve for a while. But it really comes down to the spread. Banks make their money on the spread, not necessarily an inverted yield curve. So if they're selling bonds, and yes, they're usually bigger spreads on longer term bonds. Um, in all honesty, they uh, they make pretty much the same money. Where the inverted yield curve should, curve should not have the effect on banks. A very interesting article. And I think it's an interesting one for you guys to read. Uh, I found this one. I don't know who the, there it is, James and Alpha Advisors. I usually never put another advisor's information out here, and I'll show you why in a second. But they have an article on, on drawdowns. And they did make a mistake, but pretty interesting drawdown chart and when you see how long it takes to get things back. And what I mean is they have a typo. Um, they talk about, what drawdown do they have? They talk about, there they are. They're talking about the drawdown from June 08 through March 21st. Now, of course they put June 2018 in here, but basically what they're trying to say is it took 45 months for the stock market to get back to equal. Can someone tell me, are they truly at equal if the stock market takes 45 months to get back to equal, equal back to where it was before? <laughs> I love it, guys. You have a bunch of no's. In fact, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Out of 22 of us, six had a no just like that. So here you go. Why? What are we missing? What happened during that 45 months? That almost four or five years. That's uh, three years, nine months. What happened? Ha, 
<laughs> Love it. Awesome. Uh, Dave, you're exactly correct. Fees and churning. You better believe it. They will sell the crap out of out of some things so that it's not in your portfolio. They'll sell it for a loss. So, yes, you've paid fees and you've churned out some of your old ones to make it look like you're not there and in them. And it makes perfect sense. I do chuckle at this one because they have these returns. Yet, they also talk about their fees. Their fees are 1.79 to 2.25 to maybe as much as 3%. They've got this fund, the JDIEX. Let's go find out what the JDIEX costs. JDIEX. So they have their fund. It's Morningstar rated, but why is it not giving me a uh, gross expense ratio 2.35? No low transaction fee. There's also a management fee involved in it. Normally you can bring up the Morning Star stuff. So let's even find it one other way. Let's go to J-D-I-E-X, right? J-D-I-E-X, J-D, J-D-I-E-X. Prospectus. Uh, it's a fidelity fund. So it's definitely 3.5%. It probably Looks like it's only been around for three years at a 5.98%. But if you paid 3.5 and upwards to 1.75 up to 3%, you haven't made anything on it. It's the United States. Trying to find out what it really costs. Come on. Slow internet tonight. But again, if you put in your realtor fees and everything, and the different class shares you have, tax. 
tax information, class C shares, contingent deferred sales charge, conversion feature, choosing a share class. You got all kinds of freaking things. Maximum sales charge price, 5.75. management fees, other expenses. Wow. So, could be in this range, plus you have the fees to pay someone like me to sell it, which can be between 1.75 and 3%. So if we just did the lowest ones, we just did the lowest ones, 1.75. The cost is going to be 4.43. And guess what? If you hold on to it, you'll pay another point, 1.5% roughly in taxes which means you got a 5.93% net return and a 5.93% net return on a fund that has averaged in the last five years, 5.98%. And through the lifetime of the fund, it's only averaged 4.23. You have been in a fund where you have not made a friggin' penny in that four-year time period. Way to go, fund. That's the way to be. <laughs> way to freaking go. So, note to self. Don't invest in funds, but with that said, I did find their charts and their information about how long a down current can navigate. Pretty interesting. I'm not pushing this advisor. I don't believe in this advisor, but the information was pretty down, pretty darn good. And I have to give them all the due respect for everything that was in here. All right, uh, next earnings. Uh, Baidu's AI Edge. Chinese unit stock shining comparison. So pretty interesting. This person doesn't have Baidu in here in his own portfolio, but he's got great information. In all honesty, um, everything he said here gave me a reason to purchase Baidu. It's just information on Baidu. It's understanding all their revenue streams, uh, a great understanding of what they're doing in general. Again, at the end, he does not recommend Baidu, but boy, he sure does give them a pretty good um, a pretty good opportunity to to keep going. So. Just take a look at it. Something for you to read, understand more on Baidu. What was my last one? Apple worst case scenario. Found information on the downgrade to 150. Interesting article if you're worried about Apple. Definitely do read it, but this is why I would be in just a long put. S&P hits us all, look at signal market top. Interesting article. And Disney, time to take the profit. Obviously, I don't think it's time to take the profit. And I think that's what they came up with as well. Uh, if you've been in it for a while, you could take some profit. Because of what we do, we can put long puts on, and there's no reason for us to, to get out of Disney. We, we should be in a, a pretty good scenario. Um, with that said, any questions? Any questions at all? Kevin, would you buy into Disney right now? Definitely. I would buy into Disney. I would add a long put 
out to an August monthly at 145. Um, but again, you're looking to own Disney for future growth. You will get uh, pretty good earnings. They should knock it out of the park with Endgame. I'm not sure how they're going to do because they have a Marvel Spider-Man movie that they're sh sharing with Sony that's out right now. You had Aladdin that did very good. You have Toy Story that's doing very good. Uh, their parks are doing pretty good. I don't know about their cruise lines. So I still see upward potential in, in, uh, in Disney. If I had the opportunity to put money in, I would definitely do that. If you take a peek, they they still have their their new um, movie channel, Disney Plus, coming out and Hulu. But it's funny. He says it's undoubtedly the right way to go business wise, but investors there are better options like AT and T and flexible solutions. I disagree with it. I would significantly disagree with it. They're obviously long all three of those, but when you look at AT&T, AT&T is trending the wrong way. AT&T's chart looks pretty horrific. Come on. T. Update. What is happening? There we go. AT&T is at 33. Still down, and I don't see the opportunity to go back up. Still down from the 50s. Easy money's been already made. And I, boy... And it might only get back up to 37. So multi-year three, a yearly high, it's already at. A multi-year high is going to be 37.13 on a $33.71 stock. Whereas you have Disney that looks like this with multiple opportunities to go higher. Multiple reasons that give it opportunities to go higher. Sometimes you wonder what people are smoking when they're uh, when they're writing an article like this. So would I still get into Disney now? Most definitely, I would play their earnings, which is on the sixth after the market closes, and I would do so with just a long put. I would not be capping Disney for all the reasons I just mentioned in regards to to movies that are coming up and profit and revenue moving forward. Uh, they could have a serious spike in December for people paying $69 a year like I will for their Disney Plus. No brainer, even though I already have Netflix. For another $70 to have all the Disney movies, no brainer, doing it done. So buy Disney. Uh, again, let me... <laughs> Yes, let me repeat that one more time. No brainer, doing it, done. Are there any other questions I can answer for you guys? If not, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for the trade findings and adjustments. Do show up to that, do come along and we'll see if we can't find some more opportunities. Um, I'm stalling to see if anyone else comes in. All right, guys, appreciate being here. Have a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you again uh, for those that are going to be available on the trade findings and adjustments. Bye-bye.